In the previous lecture, we saw the definitions of invertible and non-invertible systems and I also explained how to find out if the given system is invertible or non-invertible. Now in this presentation, we are going to solve problems. In our first problem, output yt is equal to mod xt. This is the system relationship and we are required to find out if the system is invertible or non-invertible. And to do this, we will first find out if there is one to one mapping or many to one mapping. So let's make our table. The first column of the table is for the input values and the second column of the table is for the corresponding output values. The first input value I will take is minus two. Y t is equal to mod x t. So x t is equal to minus two. So y t is equal to mod minus two. Therefore it is equal to two. The next value I will take is two. Mod two is equal to two again. Then I will take two j. Mod two j is equal to two. Then I will take minus two j. And mod minus two j is equal to two again. Therefore you can see when x t is equal to minus two, the output is equal to two. When x t is equal to two, the output is two again. When x t is equal to two j, the output is two. And when x t is equal to minus two j, the output is equal to two. So for four different values of input, we have the same value of output. Therefore, there is many to one mapping. And when there is many to one mapping, the signal is non-invertible. The signal is non-invertible and this is our answer. Now we will move to the second problem. The second problem is an important problem. Here y t is equal to sine t multiplied to the input x t. This problem is important because our approach till now will not exactly work here. I will explain you why. First, we will make the table. The first column is for the input. The second column is for the output. It is equal to sine t multiplied to x t. Till now, we are selecting numerical values for the input. I will do the same. Let's say x t is equal to zero. So y t will be equal to sine t multiplied to zero which is equal to zero. So things are fine when x t is equal to zero. We don't know exactly the value of sine t when x t is equal to zero because we don't know the time instant. We don't know at what time instant x t is equal to zero. Therefore, we cannot put the time instant at this place and we cannot calculate sine t. That's why I left sine t as it is, but x t is equal to zero. So the overall result will become zero. So in the first case, when x t is zero, y t is equal to zero, there is no problem. But now we will take the next numerical value. Let's say it is one. So x t is equal to one at some time instant, which we don't know. So y t will be equal to sine t multiplied by one or simply sine t. Now we will take the next numerical value, let's say two at some time instant, which we don't know. So y t will be equal to two sine t. You will say we have three different values of output for three different values of input. Therefore, the system is invertible, but you cannot guarantee that the sine t is different than two sine t. Let's say x t is equal to one at the time instant when sine t is equal to one. So y t will be equal to one. This is something we have assumed. And let's say x t is equal to two at a time instant when sine t is equal to one by two. So we have two multiplied by one by two. So it is equal to one. And sine t one by two is also the assumption. So you can see y t is equal to one for both x t equal to one and x t equal to two. So for two different values of input, the output is same. Therefore, the system is non-invertible. So you can see you cannot comment exactly about the nature of the system when you take the numerical values like this. So whenever the problem is little bit complicated, don't select the numerical values as your input. 
You can select the standard signals like impulse and step to solve the question. For example, let's say xt is equal to delta t which is the unit impulse signal and for this output yt is equal to sine t multiplied to delta t and it is equal to 0. Now how it is equal to 0? I have used the property of impulse signal. If you remember the property xt multiplied to delta t minus t1 it is equal to x t1 multiplied to delta t minus t1. Here t1 is equal to 0 because we have delta t. You can write it as delta t minus 0. So t1 is equal to 0. Put t1 in place of t in xt. The sine t is xt. Put t1 in place of t. t1 is equal to 0. So we will have x0 or sine 0. Sine 0 is equal to 0. So 0 multiplied by delta t is equal to 0. Now we will have twice of delta t. This will give us y t equal to sine t multiplied by twice of delta t. Again we will use the same property t1 is equal to 0. So we will put 0 here in place of t. So sine 0 will be 0. 0 multiplied by 2 delta t will be 0. So you can see for two different values of input we have the same output and when this happens we know it is many to one mapping therefore the system is non-invertible so i hope you now understand how to use the standard signals to find out the answer when the question is little bit tricky let's move to the third problem in the third problem y t is equal to x to t we will follow the same steps xt yt in the first column we will have different values of input in this problem also i am not taking the numerical values i will take the unit step signal so yt which is equal to x to t will be equal to u to t now i will take minus ut so yt will be equal to minus u to t so you can see for two different values of input the output is also different therefore there is one to one mapping and when there is one to one mapping the system is invertible system so this is all for this lecture and now we will move to the homework problems in the first homework problem, yt is equal to xt square and in the second problem, yt is equal to d by dt of xt and you are required to find out the nature of the two systems whether they are invertible or non-invertible. Now before ending this lecture, I want to explain two points which may confuse you. The first point is related to the use of this property. And the second point is related to the process we have used in order to obtain different outputs in problem number 3. I will start with the problem number 3. You can find out the functionality of the system from the system relationship. Here input is xt given to the system whose property we need to find out. And the output of the system is yt which is equal to x. 2t. Now compare xt and x2t you will find there is time scaling. 2 is multiplied here which is the case of time scaling. So our system is performing the time scaling and we have the time scaled input. Now look at ut. ut is equal to xt and the functionality of the system is to perform the time scaling. So our system will perform the time scaling on ut by multiplying 2 to the time. So we have u2t. In the same way, when you have input equal to minus ut, the system will again perform the time scaling and we will have minus u2t. So this is how we have obtained the two outputs in problem number 3. Now regarding the use of this property, it is very simple. xt in our case is equal to sine t and delta t minus 1 is equal to delta t. 
So delta t we can write as delta t minus 0. So if you compare delta t minus 0 with delta t minus t1, you will get t1 is equal to 0. And it is equal to x t1 delta t minus t1. So the impulse part will remain same. We will have delta t minus t1 here, which is same as delta t minus t1, but x t will change to x t1. So this t here is now replaced by t1. And in our case, you can see t1 is equal to 0. So delta t part will remain same, but sin t, which is x t, will now have t equal to 0 because t1 is equal to 0. So we have sin 0, which will give us 0 and 0 multiplied by delta t is equal to 0. So this is how we have used this property. I have already explained this property along with other properties in great detail while explaining the properties of impulse signal. So this is all for this lecture and once you have the answers of the two problems post it in comment section. So I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.